Today's lesson is over a review of simplifying non-perfect square roots. So let's first look at some vocabulary when we're talking about an expression that involves a radical like this. So this little symbol right here that's in purple, that's called a radical. This number right here is called an index. I've got all these arrows going here, so why don't I just like erase them because it's all color coordinated anyways. That's an index. When you have a square root, it's assumed that your index is two. So if you look at number one, it's assumed that that little number there is a two, but we don't need to write it when we have a square root. Okay, so um, it'll just look like that, right? We don't need to write it two. What's underneath the radical is called the radicand. So I might use some of these vocabulary words when we are working through some of these um, problems today. So first I wanna point you to this perfect squares table over here. What is this perfect squares table? The number that's in the column on the left, when you square it, you get what's on the right, what's in the column on the right. So for example, if I take three and I square it, three squared, and I'm gonna write it like that, is nine. Same thing with seven, seven squared is 49. If I, let's walk through um, examples one through three. These are perfect squares. When we simplify the following perfect squares, for example, on number one, if I take the square root of 81, that's right here. If I move from the right column to the left, the square root of 81 is nine. When you just have a problem that's asking you, like there's no equal sign in your problem. You can say it that way. When there's no equal sign. It's asking for the principal square root. So if I'm just asked to simplify the square root of 81, I want the positive square root of 81, which is positive nine. Number two, the square root of 64, that's right here. The square root of 64 is eight. Number three, the square root of 36, these are all perfect squares. Square root of 36 is six. These are all perfect squares. When I take the square root of a perfect square, I get a positive whole number, which whole numbers are um, positive. Or zero, zero is also a positive number. Let's move on to simplifying non-perfect squares. So what if that radicand, that number that's underneath the radical, is not a perfect square? How do we simplify square root when the radicand is not a perfect square? Here's what we're going to do. And if you want to refer to that perfect squares chart, I would encourage you to do so. The first thing you're going to do is find the, biv the biggest perfect square factor of the radicand and write it as a product of two factors. So what I like to do when I find the square root of 32 is, and I'm gonna erase everything from my little perfect squares table up here. This is kind of just a little tip. The square root of 32. So the square root of 32 is like right here, right? It's in between 25 and 36, right? The radicand is in between 25 and 36. So what you wanna do then is go through all of these perfect squares, what's the biggest one of those numbers, the biggest number that goes into 32 a whole number of times. So 32 divided by 25, you get a decimal. 32 divided by 16, oh, what do you get? You get two. So 16 is the biggest perfect square that goes into 32. 16 times what is 32? 16 times two. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna write 32 as a product of two factors. Those two factors are 16 and two. So the square root of 16 times the square root of two. But the square root of 16 is a perfect square. It's four, so I can actually rewrite this number as four, and I get four times the square root of two, and I'll write that as four square roots of two, or four root two. Let's do four, five, and six. So on number four, the square root is 75. So again, you can go to your perfect squares table. What's the biggest perfect square that goes into 75 a whole number of times? If you wanna pause the video and try to do that now, I would encourage you to do that. And the number is 25. So I can write 75 as a product of 25 times three, 25 being a perfect square. Right, 25, square root of 25 times square root of three, and let me just tell you, square root of 25 times square root of three is the same thing as the square root of 25 times three, which is the square root of 75. So that's why I can write it 
like this. So the square root of 25 times the square root of 3, what is the square root of 25? It's 5, so I can write it as 5 times the square root of 3, which I would just write this, 5 square roots of 3, which you can read it like that, 5 square roots of 3, 5 root 3. It means 5 times the square root of 3. Let's move on to number 5. Notice that there is a coefficient of the radical. There's something in front of that radical. It's a negative, and if you want, you can put a 1 right there, right? That's just negative 1, which is really negative 1 times the square root of 12. The first thing we want to do is simplify the square root of 12. What's the biggest perfect square that goes into 12? 4. 4 times what? 4 times 3. So I'm going to write it as the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. What is the square root of 4? It's 2. So I'm going to write it as 2 square roots of 3. But notice we had that negative out front. When you have something out front in front of your radical, a coefficient, at the after you simplify your radical, you're going to take that coefficient and multiply it by the number that's out in front. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. So negative 2 square roots of 3. Let's move on to number 6. Number 6. And notice I have a number out in front. We're going to worry about that last, okay? So the square root of 40. What's the biggest perfect square that goes into 40? It's 4. 4 times what? 4 times 10. So I'm going to write it as the square root of 4 times the square root of 10. What is the square root of 4? It's 2. That's our perfect square. So we're going to write it 2 square roots of 10. So what we leave, what's underneath the radical, can't be simplified any further. Meaning, this 10 in there, there's no perfect square that's a factor of 10. Okay? Meaning, there's no perfect square smaller than 10 that can go into 10 a whole number of times. So don't forget that 5 that was outside. That 5, we're going to take it and multiply it by 2. So the last thing we're going to do is multiply 5 by coefficient. Okay. Multiply 5 by the coefficient of the radical last, this being the coefficient of the radical. So 5 times 2 is 10. So we've got 10 square roots of 10, and that's my answer. So this little right, this little thing right here, I just want you to write that down so that you can refer back to it whenever you're working through your problems. Let's move on to the next set of examples. Simplifying radical expressions. This says to simplify the following radical expressions. In example number seven, we have a radical in our numerator. Well, let's simplify that. So the square root of 50, let's do that off to the side square root of 50. I've zoomed in so much it writes slow. Square root of 50. What's the biggest perfect square that goes into 50? It's 25. So I'm going to break 50 down into the square root of 25 times the square root of 2. What is the square root of 25? It's 5. So this is 5 square roots of 2 or 5 root 2. That's in our numerator 5 root 2 over 2 and we would leave it just like this. Okay, 5 root 2 over 2. 5 times the square root of 2 divided by 2. Let's move on to number 8. I've got the square root of 27 in my numerator and 6 in my denominator. So the square root of 27, let's simplify that first. What's the biggest perfect square that goes into 27? It's 9. 9 times what? 9 times 3. So the square root of 9 times the square root of 3. I can rewrite the square root of 27 times the square root of 9 um, as the square root of 9 times the square root of 3. What is the square root of 9? It's 3. So I can rewrite it as 3 square roots of 3. So what I've got now is 3 square roots of 3 over 6. But in this case, if you have a coefficient of your radical and your denominator, so this right here, and this right here, that's like a fraction of 3 over 6, right? I can simplify that. They have common factors, which is 3. I can divide 3 by 3, which is 1. I can divide 6 by 3, which is 2. 
I can simplify this radical or this expression as the square root of three over two or one times the square root of three over two. And that's what that looks like. So we can kind of treat, in a lot of ways, you can treat your radical like a variable, right? So if you had something like, um, let me, let's go back to number eight. If you have something like this, like three X over six, right? I just replace the square root of three with an X. You would simplify this, right, as one times x over two or just x over two. Well, that's the same thing, right? So you can kind of treat it like a variable. Let's move on to number nine. So we've got a bunch of things going on with number nine. In number nine, we have four plus the square root of 20 divided by two. I've zoomed in too much, sorry. So the first thing we're gonna do is simplify that non-perfect square root, which is the square root of 20. So let's do that first. So the square root of 20, what's the biggest perfect square that goes into 20? It's four, four times what? Four times five. So the square root of four times the square root of five. What is the square root of four? It's two, two square roots of five. I'm gonna rewrite that square root of 20, only the square root of 20 as two square roots of five. So watch what I do here. Four plus two square roots of five over two. So again, I want you to treat that uh, radical expression like, or just the radical, right? The radical and the radicand. I want you to treat it like it's a variable. So if we had something that looked like this, four plus two X, um, which I need to erase this, four plus two X over two, what would I do here? I can factor out a two, right? If I factored out a two over here that's in orange, if I factored out a two, I'd be left with two plus X over two. Well, let's do the same thing over here. I'm gonna change colors again. I'm gonna factor out a two. If I factor out a four divided by two, I'm left with two. Two square roots of five divided by two, I'm just left with the square root of five over two. So what happens now? Let's go back to our this over here in orange, right? Where I replace the square root of five with an X. These simplify, they cancel and I'm just left with two plus X. I can do the same thing over here and I'm left with two plus the square root of five. So don't forget to simplify. In number 10, number 10, okay, there's a lot of stuff going on. I'm subtracting, I've got a radical in my numerator up there, and I've got a fraction. Okay, the first, it says get a common denominator. Oh, that's a little reminder that when I'm subtracting fractions, I need to get a common denominator. Okay, well, my denominator is obviously four, right? So how can I write one with a denominator of four? Four over four right? Minus the square root of 45 over 4. Okay, so now let's simplify the square root of 45. The square root of 45, what's the biggest perfect square that goes into 45? 9. 9 times what? 9 times 5. So square root of 9 times the square root of 5. So if you haven't already noticed at this point, it's a really good idea to memorize your perfect squares. What is the square root of 9? It's 3. So three square roots of five. So I'm gonna rewrite this as four minus three square roots of five over four. And when I have a common denominator like this, I can write it as four minus three square roots of five over four. And a lot of times I encourage you, if you're like, what can I do in this situation? If you replace that little radical with an X, just a variable, a lot of students seem to like it makes a little more sense to it to them because they're used to seeing it like that and this is kind of might be more new to you so this is our last one and it's a challenge and this just helps with um you know what we're going to be doing in the next several days but what if you get something like this what does this mean this means negative 5 over 2 plus or minus the square root of 35 over 2. okay well Let's simplify this radical. Square root of 35. What's the biggest perfect square that goes into 35? There's not one. So in this situation, you can't simplify the radical. And if you can't simplify it, then leave it. But I can rewrite it as negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 35 
over 2. So just like we did in examples 9 and 10, if I have that common denominator, I can combine what's in my numerators, okay? So negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 35. What does this mean? This means we can generate two expressions, one being negative 5 plus the square root of 35 over 2, or negative 5 minus the square root of 35 over 2. These right here, this, along with these two things, these are the same. They mean the same thing. These are the same. Okay? And you've got a little reminder over here. Plus or minus means plus or minus. You set up two expressions, one where you add and one where you subtract. And that concludes your notes over simplifying non-perfect square roots. As a review, I hope it was helpful.